Hey guys, I'll be here. Sorry for the lighting. Uh, it's six o'clock. Uh, it's snowstorm. I'm in Canada and there's no light. Um, and I'm currently driving home from work, so it is what it is. Uh, in this video, I'd just like to talk to you about food storage. Um, and I kind of touched on this during your uh, new to prepping video. You can back channel and watch that. Uh, and I was talking about canned foods, uh, food buckets, stuff like that. Um, this is going to be a little bit more advanced. Uh, something that I've kind of started to sort it. Well, I have started it. Uh, I'm nowhere near an expert on it just yet. Uh, it's a shame that my great grandmother passed away when she did because I was just about to buy a ticket to go back home uh, to Newfoundland and talk to her and get her to show me now that I'm old enough. Uh, to fully understand but unfortunately she had a stroke and passed away um so there's that uh canning um was a way of life for many of our grandparents and our great grandparents and even some of our parents uh depending on your age uh it was nothing to have a robust pantry um my great grandmother had a whole bedroom uh allocated just to canned jams and canned meats and stuff like that uh, dehydrated well smoked meats and dried cod and all that if you guys know anything about the east coast of Canada you know how prevalent that is um, great grandfather was a fisherman all of his life uh, from the time he was 8 he was working on boats uh, great grandmother uh, again worked all of her life supported 13 uh, children uh, worked hard every day and loved her family no matter what um, great role model so that uh, that that whole thing um, I saw a meme at the beginning of this whole thing that's going on right now uh and it, it said, y'all are about to find out why grandma kept her tinfoil. Uh, and you're starting to see it, right? You're starting to see those shortages. You're starting to see that lack of uh, stuff on the shelf. Uh, and it's only just beginning, guys. Um, so, well, you may be thinking, yes, it's expensive. And you're right, yeah, food's gotten a little bit expensive. But it's not going to get any cheaper, right? You guys got to realize that. Um, so while it's on sale now, buy as much as you can. If you got a, if, I don't know what you guys got there in the States, but if Campbell's Soup goes on sale or uh, Campbell's Chunky Soup, I don't know if you guys have that or not. Uh, if that goes on sale, um, buy a flat of it. Like, buy a case. Um, beans go on sale, buy the shelf. Uh, rice goes on sale, buy the shelf. Like buy what buy whatever that limit is. I don't know if you guys have that down there in the states uh, or other parts of the world. I'm not quite sure where all my viewers are from. If uh, actually, yeah, I'd like to know that. Uh, if you could drop your country, anyways, where you're from in the comment section, just so I, I know, so I can kind of address kind of issues I see going on in your country uh, instead of just mine. That would be cool. Um, you can grow a little community here. So yeah, just drop uh, what country you're from down there in the comment section below. And uh, it'd be interesting to see where everyone's from. Uh, there's 170 of you uh, as of the time of this video, the time I've been filming this. So thank you for everyone who subscribed. That's insane. And I honestly never thought I'd get this far, but we're on the right track, guys. If I can get 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2022, that's my goal. Uh, so please share and like this video. Uh, anyways, back to the topic at hand. Um, if you can get things on sale, like, yeah, it's not ideal. They're not nearly as cheap as what it used to be. Growing up, I remember going on uh, grocery trips with my mom. Um, this is in probably the late 90s. Uh, you can get a can of soup for 25 cents uh, here in Canada. No name brand, obviously. Um, even the name brand stuff was 35, 40 cents. I can, now it's $1.25 and that's only in my lifetime. So you can only imagine what things must have been like 
growing up, that's just the inflation from the late 90s that I've noticed personally. Um, that's that's huge. Um, almost 100 girl over that, almost 400%, right? And the cost of living, and sorry, the wages haven't gone up that much to out to adjust for that, right? So there's the cost of living is going through the roofs and the food prices going through the roof and the food availability is going through the floor. So there's that. Uh, so while things are on sale, make sure you grab them, okay? Um, stack it to the rafters as uh, Baron Dependent, Pastor Joe Fox say. Uh, that's a biblical saying, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so, and another thing too is if you, if you can, if you've got the lawn for it and you can put a couple of raised bed gardens out there, do it. Put raised bed gardens out there. Grow your own potatoes, grow your own tomatoes, grow your own beans, grow... If you have the space for it, grow your own corn. If you can grow your own corn, that's insanely valuable. Uh, you can dry that, store that. Uh, look at the Native American Three Sisters vegetables, right? Uh, look at that, the way they grew those. Um, that's honestly, especially in my area, that's how they lived, right? So if they lived off it, I can live off it. So there's stuff to be learned there. Um, I'm not too sure uh, in the States, uh, your native, uh, American history, but I know here in Canada, I know, I know it enough to understand and respect, uh, the trials and tribulations that they had to go through. Um, not only just in, uh, in their own time, but obviously when, uh, settlers came and all that, uh, and the Vikings came 543 years before Columbus did, so he did not discover North America. He just documented it. Um, anyways, this is in the History Channel. Uh, yeah, so just stack it to the rafters. Make sure you guys get got your food storage. Um, I'd recommend starting right now if you can. Don't go into debt over it, but go and buy two weeks worth of food if you don't already have it. Um, if you're buying groceries every couple of days, that's not okay. Um, now, if it's on sale and you're just filling up your supplies, then okay. Uh, that's acceptable, I guess. Um, but you should have at least two weeks worth of food at a bare minimum. That's put back at all times. At least two weeks. Um, that you are not touching. That you, that's not you're not eating that every week right that's extra food that's not on the menu okay a uh, friend of mine uh, he recently asked me to come over and evaluate his preps uh, he's looking to join our mag and we do have a requirement of six months worth of food um, at a bare minimum and uh, some other things uh, that I can't really talk about on YouTube um, you gotta have your plate carrier and all that stuff, right? Um, and you gotta have medical training, first aid training, at least uh, basic first aid uh, at a bare minimum. Uh, there are standards for that. Um, and he asked me to evaluate his food preps uh, and his wife swore, oh, we got six months, we got six months. At least not wife, girlfriend. I said, uh, I, as the leader of the, the mag um, and the tribe, the founder, I'll determine that, right? That's got to be your, your, your call. If you're the leader of your tribe, you got to put your foot down sometimes. Um, and you got to make that known right from the beginning. Um, now, uh, I'm not saying rule with an iron fist, but uh, a respected fist is the way I like to go. I'm not going to do something that's detrimental to my tribe's safety or anybody's safety. And uh, I need them to know that they can respect my decision and I've weighed all the options, right? Uh, leadership sometimes is not the easiest thing to do. Um, as I'm sure any of you that have been put in a leadership situation can contest to. Um, 
so I went over to evaluate after his girlfriend, well, fiance kind of thing. Anyways, um, swore they had six months worth of food and they're ready for their initial evaluation. Uh, I've known this guy since high school. He's a good friend of mine. Um, so I went over to his house. I said, dude, you got three weeks. He's like, what are you talking about? And I broke down the calories to him. Um, and the way I break down calories is not of my own doing. Um, that's actually Bear, uh, for Bear Independent. I use his method because I found it's spot on. Um, I was using a different system that I kind of worked out myself. I found I found some holes in it that Bear's system filled and excelled above what I did. Uh, so I've kind of adopted his way and I've went from my own food preps being X number to uh, far less than that. Well, not far less, but a portion of that because I didn't adjust for calorie deficit and all that. Um, so thankfully now we're back up and uh, I'm forefront with that. Like I put that out front uh, with my mag being like, hey guys, um, my calculations were not right um, or not to what I feel like they should be. Uh, we're going to adopt this system and uh, it's going to be beneficial to everybody because we're going to have extra food that uh, is put up for those who decide to come and uh, who we accept to help later on. And everyone agreed on it. We took a, a vote on it. Sometimes voting is good. Uh, makes people feel included, right? It's, you can't always rule with an iron fist, as I said. Um, and he said, what do you mean? Like, it's, it's a thousand calories per, per person per day. It's like, guy, you got to have three and a half times that, maybe arguably four times that, for me to even consider letting you in on this tribe. Uh, granted, he doesn't know who the members are. Uh, I trust him. Um, just... In the long run, should something happen, our tribe agrees that we don't disclose that to anybody. Um, so we keep a watchful eye on who's coming and going kind of thing, right? Internal security is huge, uh, along with um, operational security. Um, if you got friends coming and going out of our property um, that I don't know, that's not okay. Uh, if they don't have my clearance to be on the property, they will not be on the property. Um, if I catch them on the property, there's adverse uh, effects that will happen. Um, up to and including dismissal from the mag. Um, anything you put into the mag is no longer yours kind of thing. It's all signed on a document that you agree to this. Uh, so every, everyone's on their own page. Um, there's been horror stories of people coming and taking everybody's stuff uh, that I've heard from other people. And we're all under the agreement that certain things are group items that we all pay for, we all pitch in together. Uh, Cause after all, in the long run, it's all gonna affect us as a group. So maybe larger things your mag or your tribe will purchase um now i get this kind of this video kind of past uh food has kind of got into people and tribes and i kind of just when i film my videos kind of just let let what's on my soul come out uh and i feel that People are people are gonna need people. Uh, your lone wolf types, I don't think are gonna last very long. Um, I think it's pretty nihilistic for you to think that you by yourself can run off into the woods and drink your own piss and be bear grills and all that. Um, should you have those skills where you can survive? Yeah, but not you're not gonna survive indefinitely by yourself. Um, you're gonna need people eventually. Um, you can only be awake so long, right? There's 24 hours in a day and eventually you gotta sleep. Who's watching your stuff? Who's doing the things while you're sleeping? Right? Bad times.
items are coming fast, guys. Guys and gals. The shortages that you're seeing, again, are manufactured. Um, they, here in Canada, um, the Prime Minister, I'm not going to say his name because I do not respect him. Uh, I respect the office, I don't respect the man. Um, laid off uh, truck drivers and at least in my area if you guys are from Canada feel free to post down below um, how things are in your area uh, at least in my initial area we're starting to see the shortages get bad um, if you look into uh, things like grocery stores and uh, stuff like that you're gonna notice that especially in my area that there's no fruits there's no vegetables and what's there is starting to rot um, they're kind of just using what they have and hoping for the best and unfortunately you can only tell somebody to start preparing so many times before you give up um, and a lot of the people who I associated with last year, I just got sick and tired of telling, you got you got to go, you got to get out of here, you got to prep, you got to put stuff back. There's only so much that one person can say before my atten your attention is driven off to somebody else. Um, you can look out for that person. You can suggest to that person that things are going to go rough. Um, but eventually you will have to uh, cut ties with that person until they come around. Um, you telling them to constantly and all that and them not doing any action you're wasting your breath um, now for some of us those are loved ones some of those some of us those are people who we've known our entire lives um, fortunately for me my loved ones they all get it uh, I get not everyone is that fortunate but there there were people that I've known since I was a small child I was considering myself good friends with um, that I had to do a cost-benefit analysis on the, that person and unfortunately no matter what they just weren't getting it and I could not have them thinking that I'm going to support them um, now that's a hard conversation to have with somebody especially somebody who you've known since junior kindergarten in one example uh, knowing this person since I was four or five years old, uh, went through school with them, um, high school, heck, I even worked with them for a while. Uh, it's a tough conversation to have. Um, now, not necessarily is everybody going to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. But uh, they will if you look out for them. If you put it in terms that they'll understand, uh, most of the time they'll see it uh, through your eyes. Maybe, maybe don't go off the deep end too far. Um, I got a business phone call coming in, so unfortunately I'm gonna have to cut this video short. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can check me out on Patreon. Uh, that's up and running now. And you can find me on BitChute as well. Uh, that's up and running. If you want to make a donation on BitChute through PayPal, I would be greatly appreciated. Or if you'd like to subscribe on Patreon for a monthly donation, it starts 
at $1.50 Canadian. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thank you for, very much for watching. OPB out.